So now it's time to take a look at fuel injection. This method of getting fuel to our cylinders is incredibly efficient, particularly so when we compare it to the, well, ancient technology of the early 1900s, which is the carburetor. Carburetors have been around for, well, ever since the dawn of the combustion-based engine. And it wasn't long before people started to realize that carburetors were fairly inefficient. So what are we going to do? Well, we'll invent this fuel injection system. And sure enough, it was discovered that fuel injection is much more efficient. Now, why is that so? Why are fuel-injected engines way more efficient than carbureted engines? Well, in a few moments, I'll go over to the whiteboard and draw a diagram. And that's not uncommon with a carbureted engine, to have a huge difference in terms of temperature between each of those cylinders. That's because it's got different amounts of mixture in each one. So, as I mentioned, that is also going to greatly have an effect upon the power output of each of those cylinders. So what I'm going to end up with is an engine that isn't very efficient at setting its power. I'm also going to have, of course, an engine that isn't very efficient at setting the amount of fuel that it's burning. So those are some bad things with carbureted engines. How do we solve this problem? Well, here's what we'll do. I'm just going to erase this here. You can just remember which cylinders are which. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this carburetor here and we're going to eliminate it entirely. So let's do that. Let's just say goodbye carburetor. All right, there we go. Gone. Now notice we still have our throttle valve. But what's going to happen now is the induction system is actually going to end up being pretty much one piece. Let's put that throttle valve back in here. So now what I've got is exclusively air coming in through this system now. So let's erase all of this fuel here in the induction lines because there's no longer any fuel going through the induction system. It's exclusively air now. All right, so you're like, well, that's not going to do any good to our engine if we've only got air going through the system now. Well, here's what we do. We'll actually take a distribution unit and put it up here. What's going to happen now is this distribution unit up here will actually have a sending unit from the throttle valve that goes through, so we'll have a little sensor here. That sensor will go over here to something known as a fuel control unit. So right there. So the fuel control unit senses the position of the throttle. And it says, okay, here's how much air we have heading towards the engine. It then sends a metered amount of fuel towards the distributor up here. All right, so the fuel control unit is actually sending from the gas tanks a metered fuel amount to the fuel distributor. So I'll actually draw that line all the way, and <laughs> I did it again. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of go like this and keep it as tight as I can to here. There, that's a little bit better. So here comes all of that metered fuel towards the fuel distributor. So the metered fuel is sent to the fuel distributor, and then from here what now happens is we will have, right at the intake manifold point, we are going to put a little notch in each one of these here. 
And now, fuel goes here, and through a nozzle, remember, it's going to be pushed into the intake portion. Now, if I was to take this spot here, just this little spot here, and zoom in, so I'm going to pretend that I'm going to do that, what we would see is something like this. We've got our fuel nozzle, like that. So here's the fuel line. And this, of course, goes to the distributor. And then I've got the intake manifold, like this, going to the cylinder. So this fuel control unit sends this metered fuel towards the fuel distributor. But there's one more key piece to this, and that is a pump. So what happens is this pump, this fuel pump, is going to force this metered fuel under pressure towards the distributor and towards these lines. So what will happen is that fuel is going to come through the lines under pressure. Once it hits the nozzle, of course, it's going to be pushed out under high pressure into the air that is flowing right towards and just outside of the cylinder. So pressurized fuel getting pushed through a constricted area is going to be very efficient at atomizing that fuel. It's going to mix better with the air. And it's going to be very close to the edge of the cylinder itself. Now, because the fuel control unit has sensed how much air is coming in, it can actually, again, as I mentioned, tell the fuel, we need to send this much fuel to the distributor. We're going to send this much fuel under pressure so what now happens is these ratios here actually can become much, much tighter. So let's say that you as a pilot set your mixture to the perfect stoichiometric value, 15 to 1. So this cylinder over here might be actually running at, let's say, 14.9 to 1. This one here might be running at, say, 14.8 to 1. This one over here, maybe it's still, you know, 15.1 to 1. So now that we've got a more uniform mixture value, guess what that's going to do to our power? it's going to keep the power across all of these cylinders very much the same. The other benefit to this is, for the fuel injected unit, how about my temperatures? Well, what's going to happen there? Well, this one over here, remember at 15 to 1, um, we started out at, say, 1350. So that one will still stay at 1350. But this one is only a little bit leaner, so we might now be at, say, 1375. So what I can now see is my change in temperature between each of the cylinders has been reduced significantly. Uh, it's not uncommon for fuel-injected engines to be able to keep the temperature variation between cylinders at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or less, as in the case that I've shown you here. So, as we've seen here, more consistent power because of that consistent mixture and more consistent temperatures throughout each of the cylinders. Why? Because now we've sent a metered amount of pressurized fuel into a known air quantity. That is the purpose of fuel-injected engines.